Good morning and welcome to Church of the Redeemer UCC, where our vision is spreading the good news of God's infinite love for all. We are a just peace and open and affirming congregation. Welcome into this place where all are welcome, regardless of who you love, how old or young you are, your political views, married, single, divorced, widowed, whether you are happy or sad or just not sure, you are welcome. We are glad you chose to join us today. As we prepare for worship, I invite you to consider whether you have ever, consider whether you feel as if you have ever encountered Jesus. Let us be in an attitude of worship as we listen to the prelude. What a wonderful and unexpected surprise to hear the organ this morning. <laughs> Please rise in body or spirit for our call to worship. We come, for God gathers us here with that community called faith, where the hungry are served first, where the thirsties drink water. We come, for God welcomes us here into that home called grace, where the naked are clothed in robes of hope, where the stranger is embraced as the long-lost prodigal. We come, for God reunites us here, siblings in that family called love, where the sick model justice, where the sick are cradled in God's peace. Please join in singing hymn number 304, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
Please be seated as we join in our prayer of invocation. God who cares, we flourish in your compassion. You search for us and find us. You, Holy One, surround us with the power of your abundant love and utmost care. Be present among us as we praise your name, bring our burdens, and give thanks for all that you are and all that you do. Amen. We gather this morning as God's beloved. Do not ever forget that you are beloved by God. And with that belovedness comes the peace of Christ that dwells within each of us. I invite you at this time to share a sign of peace with those that are around you, um, if that's a wave or a peace sign, remembering to offer a sign of peace to those who are joining us online this morning. And our camera is center in the back, so be sure to turn around and offer them a sign of peace as well. May the peace of Christ be with each of you. And also with you. So accustomed to the world's shadows, we do not think of ourselves as being lost. We are so confident of where we are going, we never ask for directions. But as we confess the lives we truly lead, we, discovered, we discover how scattered we are. So let us pray together as we discover the one who has been searching for us. And let us begin with a time of silent confession. Please join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. God of generosity, we stock the food pantries, but brush aside those who hunger for friendship. We give our hand-me-downs away, but overlook those whose hopes have been stripped away. We glad-hand those just like us, but turn a deaf ear to our neighbors who talk funny. Forgive us, hope of the ages. You persistently search for us in the side streets of the world, gathering us up and bringing us home, so we may be drenched in the waters of your bottomless pool of forgiveness, watched over by your child, Jesus Christ. Amen. God feeds the hungry and gives hope to the parched. That's us. God brings healing to the sick and visits those imprisoned. That's us. God wraps warmth around the shivering and knits a sweater for the naked. That's us. God loves every person, forgives every person cares for every person. That's us. Thanks be to God.
Our scripture readings today are from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 to 24, and Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. From Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will sort them out. As shepherds sort out their flocks when they are among scattered sheep, so I will sort out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture. There there they shall lie down in good grazing land 
and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strays, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. And from Ephesians. From the time I first heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of the holy ones, I have never stopped thanking God for you and remembering you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the, glory, the God of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation to bring you to a rich knowledge of the Creator. I pray that God will enlighten the eyes of your mind so that you can see the hope this cause holds for you, the promised glories that God's holy ones will inherit and the infinitely great power that is exercised for us who believe. You can tell this from the strength of God's power at work in Jesus, the power used to raise Christ from the dead and to seat Christ in heaven at God's right hand, far above every sovereignty, authority, power, or dominion, and above any other name that can be named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. God has put all things under Christ's feet and made Christ as the ruler of everything, the head of the church, and the church is Christ's body. It is the fullness of the one who fills all creation. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God.
In May, many of us, some of us, went to see the Timothy Schmaltz installation of six sculptures depicting this passage. We started at Bridge CLE to see when I was in prison. We then went to the refugee response at Urban Community School, where we saw when I was a stranger. Next, we went to Malachi House and saw the sculpture entitled When I Was Naked. And then we went around the corner to the Cleveland Clinic Lutheran Hospital and saw When I Was Sick. We went to St. Malachi Parish and saw Homeless Jesus and then crossed the bridge and went to Old Stone Church in Public Square to witness when I was hungry and thirsty. Cleveland is only the second city in the world following Rome, Italy, to have the full collection of all six bronze figures. Now, if you missed going with us in May, they are on permanent display, so you still have an opportunity to see them. They were brought to Cleveland by the Community West Foundation. Let me tell you a little bit about Community West. I received a flyer in the mail, and not long after that, I received an email from Jim Stone, who said, hey, might we want to go do this? You see, Community West Foundation is a philanthropic organization that Jim believes in. They support organizations that provide basic needs and services in Cleveland, Western Cuyahoga, and Lorain counties. They have a commitment to dignity. They define basic needs as food, shelter, and physical and mental health. And they have deep roots with both Cleveland Clinic Lutheran Hospital and Cleveland Clinic Fairview Hospital. Most recently, the um, Community West Foundation has acquired yet another sculpture by Timothy Schmaltz entitled, Let the Oppressed Go Free. It is based on Isaiah 58.6, and that passage talks about setting the oppressed free. It focuses on the many people of all ages and genders who are impacted by human trafficking. It is currently on display in Public Square and will be there until March. Following that, it will go to its permanent home at Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. But the, script, the, the sculptures we saw this spring are the ones based on this passage. They are the, the sculptures that remind us, sculptures and scriptures, I'm going to stumble over that for a little bit, sculptures that remind us that we have an opportunity to love. To love each other, to love the vulnerable, to love Jesus. And as with any opportunity, we have a choice of taking advantage of the opportunity or not. Jesus reminds us that when he gives us an opportunity, it is always offered in love. Jesus reminds us that having power doesn't look like what the world says it looks like. This Sunday is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. It is known as Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. 
It is a Sunday in which we look at how Christ reigns. It is the end of our very long liturgical season of after Pentecost, before a new liturgical season begins with Advent. And that is all the church nerdiness you have to put up with for this morning. I don't remember hearing about Reign of Christ Sunday when I was growing up. It is not because I grew up that long ago, but it began in 1925, following the end of World War I. Prior to that, um, for those of our siblings who celebrate feast days, and that includes not just the Catholics, but also our Episcopalian siblings, in 1925, following the end of World War I, Pope Pius XI created Christ the King, or the Reign of Christ Sunday, to remind us that the world needed an alternative to empire, nationalism, consumerism, and secularism. We clearly need that reminder still today. And while I know that you all were like, what in the world is she doing standing up there singing? It says Matthew. It was a different way to hear that text. And yes, admittedly, not fully. But when I read what our text was this morning, as often happens, a song came into my head, and it was that. I had colleagues who said, yes, yes, you should sing the scripture on Sunday morning. But whether we heard all of it or only part of it, it is quite familiar to many of you, I suspect. Jesus separates people to his right and to his left, and those on his right he names as righteous and tells them all of those times that they had cared for him. Those on the left, he tells all of the times they did not care for him. Neither of them are aware that they were taking care of or not taking care of Jesus. They simply did it because it was in their nature. Those on the right are just, uh, sorry, I'm trying to do backwards for you. Those on the right are just as perplexed as those on the left. When was it that we did that to you? When was it that we didn't do that for you? Both of them were given an opportunity to love but only one group accepted the opportunity. Jesus sets the example for us on what it means to have power. Jesus says that to love and be loved is what it means to have power. To love the vulnerable, those from whom you have nothing to gain. But it is also about allowing yourself to be loved. To be loved by Jesus. Because that is what Jesus desires. Jesus desires to love us. And Jesus doesn't love us because of what we can give to him. Jesus loves us because we are God's beloved. Let me say that again. Jesus loves us because we are God's beloved. We are God's beloved humans, which sometimes means we seek power elsewhere. It means that sometimes we are on the left of Jesus 
and I am not talking politically. Sometimes we are those people who didn't care for the sick or lonely or naked or hungry. But sometimes we get it right. And even then, we don't always realize we did. Jesus knows that we want to meet him, that we want to draw nearer to him. It is how we are created. But Jesus is very clear in this passage that we don't have to believe a certain way or a certain thing. We don't have to sing the right hymn or change the style of music we sing to reach Jesus. We don't have to recite the Lord's Prayer in the same way as our neighbor in the pew. Jesus is clear. We have to humble ourselves and care for the least, the lost, the broken of this world. And Jesus recognizes that sometimes the least, the lost, and the broken are us. We have to be willing to allow others to minister to us. On this reign of Christ Sunday, Jesus reminds us that power is in caring for others and being vulnerable enough to let others care for us. Each of those things carry their own risks. Each of them provide us an opportunity to love and to be loved. I am going to surprise you this morning, and I am not going to end my sermon with what it is we need to do to be better Christians. Jesus doesn't do that. Okay, maybe he does tell us what he expects of us, but it is not in order to achieve that title of being a better Christian. He tells us what to do to love better, to turn power upside down. He also tells us again and again that we are loved. Sure, could each of us do better on loving the most vulnerable in our community? Probably. But Jesus still loves us, even when he knows we could do better. Do I believe that each of us are working towards loving the most vulnerable better? Absolutely. Does Jesus only love us when we are caring for the vulnerable? No way. Jesus shows us how we can love better through his actions. Jesus asks us to love better. But Jesus also continues to love us as we strive to do and be better. The question then becomes, are we willing to take the opportunity to love and be loved? Will we take the opportunity to care for the vulnerable, knowing that we might not even do that well? Will we bend our knees as Jesus did in hopes of seeing Jesus in their faces? Will we risk being vulnerable ourselves to let Jesus show up in our friends and neighbors who are bending their knees to help us in hopes that they might catch a glimpse of Jesus? We are presented with opportunities to love and be loved 
every day. The question is, what do we do with those opportunities? Let us listen for the still speaking God. Amen. Please join me in singing hymn number 400, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation. come to the time in the service in which we come before God just as we are, as we wish we were not, and as we wish we could become, knowing that God loves us too much to leave us where we are. Let us begin with a time of silent prayer. Reigning Christ, we come before your power with praise and thanksgiving. We come knowing that your power comes from ministering to the most vulnerable, knowing that sometimes that includes us. We come with hope as we hear of ceasefires and releases of hostages both Israeli and Palestinian. We give thanks for the bounty we have experienced these last few days and every day as we experience the bounty of your love, the bounty of love of family, the bounty of quiet time to rejuvenate. We lift prayers for those in our world who are still at war. May they know your peace. We pray for caregivers, those who give of themselves daily to those in need. Give them strength and surround them with your love. We ask for the the opportunity and the willingness to say yes, to be vulnerable, so that others might see your face in our vulnerability. We lift prayers for those living with long-term illnesses, life-limiting illnesses, those who are facing new diagnoses and new treatments, 
Surround them with your healing and peace. We give thanks for those who are here to worship both online this morning and in the sanctuary. We see their bended knees. We pray for those we now name out loud. Colette, Rusty, Barb and the girls. Jason and Scott. Christ, who is the king, but not in the way that our world says kings should be. We pray all of these things, as well as those that remain on our hearts and those names placed in the basket knowing that you know what those needs are without us even speaking them. We pray in your holy name, in the words that Jesus taught us to say when we pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God's gifts cannot be limited to the material, although they include the material. Let us acknowledge the reign of God as we share the abundance of this glorious inheritance and return a portion to support the ministry of Christ's church in the world and among the community of believers. Let us pray. May these, May these gifts, gifts be used to feed the hungry and clothe the naked, to bring medicine to the sick and provide a hospice bed for the dying, to offer hope to those who thirst for it in their lives, and to bring friendship to those who sit in jail cells. 
May these gifts bring your kingdom to everyone who longs for its presence in every circumstance, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. A reminder of what our mission statement is. Called by God through the Holy Spirit, we provide a safe place to belong where all are welcome. Following the example of Jesus, we minister to those in need, living out our faith in the wider community and inviting everyone to the table. As a way to spread the good news of God's infinite love for all, our worship service will be on our YouTube channel and Facebook page by tomorrow. And we welcome our five logins this morning who have joined us on Zoom. We live out our mission to minister to those in need by packing free this month with canned goods. Those canned goods will go to people at the centers, which is formerly the West Side Ecumenical Ministries, to be able to have some staples in their, their pantry this month. In addition, if you would like to give a cash donation for that mission, they are also the beneficiaries of our mission giving this month. We also live out our mission to minister to those in need through our community meal, where we served 136 meals yesterday with our partners at Clegg Road United Church of Christ. And our opportunities to minister are not done during this holiday season. I would like to invite Andy Bischoff forward to make an announcement about other ways, other opportunities we have to minister. Good morning. Good morning. As part of the Adopt a Family program, once again, the mission committee is sponsoring a collection of gift cards or financial donations from the congregants at Redeemer. If you would like to contribute to this program, please give cards in the amount of $25, preferably from Target, since they sell food and other items. After purchasing the cards or bringing in your monetary contributions, please put the donations in a box in the gathering room. All donations should be given by the 10th of December. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Any questions? <laughs> The Holy Spirit has been at work through your generosity. I am happy to report that our final number for the Raise the Roof campaign was $160,632. $160,632. In addition to that, we are off to a good start with our stewardship campaign. If you have not had the opportunity to turn in your pledge, you still have time to get that turned in. Last week was not a one and done. Um, thank you for your love and support of this congregation and its ministries. Bible study will meet this week on Wednesday at 1 p.m. And the Advent um, study that Pastor Kim is leading will begin on Tuesday at 1 p.m. The books are in, and Pastor Kim is delivering those to your homes on Monday. So uh, look in your front doors if you're not going to be home, or uh, plan on Pastor Kim coming to deliver on Monday. Our plan to go see Journey to Bethlehem has been thwarted. It turns out it is having a limited showing, and there are no theaters near us that are showing it next Sunday. It was a lovely idea. So we are canceling next Sunday's outing for dinner and a movie, and Pastor Kim and I hope that perhaps by next year, 
it will be available streaming or some other way that we can do a showing here at church. I would like to invite Julie Barnes to make an announcement about our upcoming Messy Church. Good morning. You are invited to join us for our December 10th Messy Church from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, the planning team, of which I'm a member, um, has put together an evening that will resemble um, our former journey to Bethlehem, a, a reimagined journey, if you will, um, but gives it life in a new way. We will need some volunteers to play angels, Herod, the census taker. Each will play a unique role in our messy church activities that night. If you have a role you love to play, uh, please sign up to play it this year. Pastor Kim will be reaching out to each volunteer personally to go over instructions. We'll have singing, cookie decorating, and even a classic breakfast for dinner. Please invite your friends, your family, and neighbors to join us. Um, remember, it doesn't matter how old or young you are, you're welcome to join us. We'll be entirely indoors, and everything is free. You can't beat that. Sign-ups for roles are also in the gathering room. Next week, we'll have a donation sheet available for materials we need. Thank you for your support in launching this ministry with Messy Church. And I am just going to reiterate, the best way to get people here is for you to invite them. So it is 4 to 6 on December 10th. It is for all ages. Please, please invite someone and come. Please mark your calendars for Saturday, December 9th, as we are called by God through the Holy Spirit to create a safe and beautiful space to worship. We will meet from 9 to noon to decorate the church and sanctuary in anticipation of the Christmas season. Many hands are needed for this, so please plan on joining us. It is always a joyful time. You can add to the beauty of the sanctuary by purchasing a poinsettia in honor or in memory of someone. The flyer is in your bulletin and will be there for the next few couple of Sundays. Each plant is only $12. They are not the ginormous ones this year. They are a lovely size for your home. That $12 is payable um, by either check or you can pay online as well. They are red, white, and marble, um, so please specify the number of plants you would like, the color, and the dedication on the form, and the deadline for that is Sunday, December 10th. I know that the holidays can be difficult, so I want you to know that all are welcome as we minister to those in need at our Blue Christmas service, December 19th at 7 p.m. And I want to say that even if the holidays are not difficult for you, it is a ministry to those who do find this time challenging for you to show up and offer your presence. It is another opportunity for you to invite your friends to attend this service of reflection and peace. And God's infinite love is spread through our prayers. You may continue to place your prayer requests in the basket that is brought forward each week, knowing that God knows what those continuing prayer needs are. Let us rise in body or in spirit and join in singing our closing hymn, number 305, You Servants of God, Your Sovereign Proclaim.
want to offer a special thank you to Li Ming, who went out of his comfort zone and um, played the prelude on the organ and is playing the postlude. So thank you so much for that gift. <laughs> may you love God so much that you love nothing else too much. And may you fear God just enough that you need fear nothing else at all. Go in peace.